In our last segment, I was talking about how this uh, Council of CEOs in Canada and the one put together in the United States by the Wall Street Journal, essentially they're sitting around saying, okay, we're going to figure out how to run the world. We've, we've got it all under control, not to worry. Uh, we know what's going on. Uh, yeah, do we really need CEOs running the world? I don't think so. And I think the things that are going to push back on that are you and me getting involved in our political process, showing up for our political parties, showing up in, in organized activities, and perhaps most importantly, a strong organized labor movement. It has been the bulwark of democracy in this country for over a 100 years. And right now, James Hoffa is with us. He is the general president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, teamster.org, the website. James Hoffa, welcome to the show. Hi, Tom. It's great to be on. Great to have you with us, and thank you so much for showing up. Uh, increasingly, we're hearing now from the Blue Dog Democrats, the DLC kind of affiliated Democrats. I mean, we knew that the Republicans were sold out long ago. They've, they've been the, the party of, of, of corporations ever since uh, 1870, really, for all practical purposes. But the Democrats have very often in, in the history of this country taken the position of we the people, and, and particularly of working people in the unions. And, and But now we're hearing from Blue Dog Democrats and some who are not Blue Dogs that, well, you know, in fact, Harry Reid the other day said, yeah, let's have a public option and let's have it run by a private corporation. And I'm going, what? Your thoughts, sir? Well, I mean, it, it's exactly what you said. Basically, what you see is the same thing you saw, you know, back in 93 with Hillary Clinton. When you start talking about reforming the health care system, uh, then all of a sudden, the big corporations, the insurance companies, the pharmaceutical, the hospital, the AMA, uh, basically the trilateral commission uh, of, of health care, right. comes out and basically says, we're going to stop this. And they start recruiting you know, some of these people that are on the line. And what you really find uh, so disappointing to us is we worked hard, you know, the labor movement worked hard to elect a strong you know, uh, a Democratic Congress. And what do we see people now when we need them are basically not there on the basic issues of health care. They're not there on with regard to the, the Employee Free Choice Act. They're not there with basic issues uh, that I thought were resolved in the last election, that we want to change. We're tired of the George Bush uh, policies, the economics of big business, and greed. And we saw what it gets us, the greatest crash since the Second you know, World War. And then what happens is the minute we get to an important issue, people are starting to run away. We've got to fight and make sure health care happens. We've got a Democratic president, we've got a Democratic House and Senate, and now is the time to get it. We've got to push hard. And all these people that basically say they're Democrats that we helped elect are now going backwards on us. So we've got to say, hey, you either get straightened out or we're going to vote you out. Yeah, amen, amen. And, and a lousy health care bill, in my opinion, is worse than no health care bill. Um, I, I, your thoughts on that? If they come out with something that's terribly watered down, well, I, I, I see that happening. I'm so worried about it. You know, we're talking about we have to have the public option. Uh, we thought that's important because that's basically the hammer that's going to make the insurance companies, you know, go through true reform. Yeah, I think uh, I think I might have just said the opposite of what I meant. If yeah, they come out with a lousy health care bill, I am opposed to it. It's worse right, but than I, no I, or a watered bill. down one. Yeah, a watered down one. I, I, if, if it's a watered down one, I will be opposed to it. I want a strong public option, or else let's just reboot the conversation and go back to talking about single payer health care. But, but I will say this, though, Tom. We started out with the idea during the campaign of the 50 million people that don't have health care. Right. And we've seen so many people, millions of people, lose their job. You know, in this last you know downturn, we all read the paper about thousands and hundreds of thousands of people losing their job. When they lose their job, they lose their health care. So that number is an old number. It's got to be going up. Sure. And, you know, I would say this. If we, we've got to find a way to ensure the 50 million people that don't have health care and to give them the opportunity to have it. You know, I go back to the idea that health care is a right, not a privilege. It's not just for the rich. It's not for the people. Everybody's got to have it. Every major democracy has it. You know, England, France, uh, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, New, you name it, they all have some type of health care, and we don't. Uh, and that is what's wrong with this country. We've got to straighten it out. But we've got to put pressure on these people. You know, I tell people, I tell our members, I do uh, infomercials, I do uh, on our website, write your congressman. Tell them now is the time for reform. If we can't get it done now, you know what's going to happen next year? Uh, next year, I guarantee that we're going to lose, you know, some Democrats in the, in the House, like we always do in history. And then they're going to say, well, not now.
Yeah. So this is the time to do it. This is the opportunity right now. Absolutely. When yeah. we are at its best. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Should, this, did you know that China just appropriated $132 billion for a national health care system? They just did it. Uh, that's great. And, <laughs> and, and they're moving ahead. Now, here's a communist country. Making their companies more competitive with and, and, and they're doing that. And that's something, you know, that we have said they've got to do. I mean, I've been to China. I've talked to the Chinese unions. Yeah. And we all know they're part of the government. Yeah. But we also know that they're trying to do something over there to basically get some idea of having some semblance of fairness in the workplace, you know, some guarantees of a job, you know, some idea if I do my but job... But if, if China can do it, we can't? Be kicked out. Right. And that's right. And, I mean, it's, it's, and, it's just crazy. It's just and crazy. here we are going backwards right now. I think the debate is a disgrace, and I think these blue dogs who think they're Democrats, all of a sudden, they have all kinds of, of reservations about what people assumed would happen. I thought that's what the election was about. Amen. I agree with you. And by the way, I want to just plug the express carrier legislation. We're out of time here, but the FAA reauthorization bill. Uh, be sure to let your, your elected officials know that you support the Express Carrier Employee Protection Act. You with me on that, James Hoffa? Absolutely. Right, your congressman. we got to change it. Let's level the playing field. There you go. And you can get all the information over at Teamster.org. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. Good talking with you. 27 minutes past the hour.